Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Jafet Rodriguez. I'm uh, the chairman of uh, the Crew Advantage. So it's uh, a privilege to get this uh, session going. Yeah. It's a session hosted by three organizations, uh, three different companies. The Crew Advantage, uh, a red carpet, and uh, an opera. So um, I'm going to introduce now uh, Dr. Sarah Berg. Um, um, Sarah has uh, um, uh, almost 20 years experience in uh, in applied psychology or organizational psychology, um, um, and certainly a, a, a great interest, a personal interest in the onboarding side of things and, and, and recruitment processes. Um, Sarah is a published author in, in onboarding um, at the international mm -hmm. level. Um, she's based in uh, New Zealand, um, and she's got extensive private and public experience um, uh, through their customer base at Opera in, uh, in New Zealand, where we, um, for which she is uh, one of the directors and co-owners of uh, Opera in New Zealand. So uh, both Sarah is going to uh, talk to us today about onboarding, um, uh, one of uh, her, her passions as a, as a topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks, lovely. Thanks yeah. for that, Jafet. Yeah. Well, hopefully um, by the end of uh, this presentation, we will have answered a few of your questions around onboarding. But um, you might be surprised to know that every organisation already has an onboarding program in place because every organization has staff leaving and staff arriving so in some shape or other we all have an onboarding program so the question is not so much do you have an onboarding program it's how well your onboarding program actually supports the learning and the adjustment of your new hires so how well does your onboarding program assist the learning and the adjustment of your new hires. And hopefully by the end of this presentation you'll be able to have answered that question for yourselves. My own onboarding experience was a bit like this. So I joined after leaving university a well-known international recruitment agency and I pretty much got on board. The program I went through was one, two hours in length, and the information I received was just thrown <coughs> at me pretty fast and furiously. And I didn't realise at the time, but my onboarding experience was very much an extension of the culture of that organisation. So I was left a lot to my own devices. I, was, I learned a lot through just trial and error, and it was you know, a very much a sink or swim culture. And it always struck me at the time as being quite ironic that an organisation that specialised in human resources actually did things so poorly. Uh, but it was another several years uh, before I realised that there were other ways with which to do things and there were better ways with which to onboard staff. I have to say though that um, my first exposure to onboarding as a topic was that this was quite a lightweight area with which to research. My initial thoughts were that you know, here we are recruiting adults, recruiting professionals, why would we want to then go and wrap them up in cotton wool? You know, these are people who should be able to work things out for themselves. I was thrown in the DP and surely other people can cope. I coped, other people should be able to as well. So that was my first thoughts about this whole area of research. I have to say though that as I began to talk to organisations and research more about the topic, I had to change my tune. That the research in this area was quite hard to refute. That up on the, um, up on the screen really is just a smattering of some of the outcomes that we can expect from a well-designed onboarding programme. And I don't know of any CE or business leader in the country who wouldn't want stronger culture, wouldn't want more cohesive team membership, wouldn't want lower absenteeism, higher job satisfaction. You know, these are pretty impressive results that through onboarding we can achieve at an organisational group and individual level. So I had to sit up and take note and it was very much as I said, my own researching in this area that um, caused me to 
you know, really want to uh, research and, and get to know this area in a lot more detail. Let's have a look at a definition. Onboarding focuses on accelerating the learning and the adjustment of our new hires by transferring job specific content, role, group and cultural knowledge. It is a process that relies on insiders to provide a suitably customised experience that commences pre-selection and unfolds over time. Now there's a lot in here, so what I want to do is just um, break that down and actually have a look at it in a more um, graphical form. So what I've done is actually draw that definition and I'll talk to it um, step by step. If we want to support the learning of our new hires, there are four things we have to remember. Now if you take nothing else away from this presentation, I'd love for you to remember these four things. I call them the four C's. Learning and adjustment is all about building content knowledge, clarity around the role, building group connections, and knowledge of the culture. So first and foremost, what is our new hire here to do? What is the task? What are they here to deliver? What is the nature of their role? Role clarity. What is the um, expectations that sit around their role? What are the um, broad parameters and the accountabilities that sit around their role? Connections. So that's all about the relationships up, out, down, across, inside, outside the organisation. The network that we wrap around that person and culture. That's all about the norms, the way we do things around here, the unspoken uh, policies and expectations. So content, clarity, connections and culture. At its heart, that's what onboarding is all about. Okay. Now, onboarding doesn't happen in a vacuum. In our definition, I talked about the role of insiders. And most notably, there's a team and a manager that we wrap around that person who is going to provide support, nurturing, mentoring and guidance. And it's a process that unfolds over time. Okay, so it's not something that much like my own experience um, took one or two hours. It's something that happens over a number of months. And it's also a process that happens pre-hire. And this is the bit where a lot of people, I think, also forget that they, a lot of organisations assume that onboarding starts the minute someone steps foot inside your organisation. I would argue that it, step, it starts way before that. It starts way before you've even engaged with a candidate. And there's two stages pre-hire that I'll talk to today. Pre-selection, which is uh, prior to engaging with the candidate, and pre-boarding which is that period of time when you've already accepted a candidate, but they haven't yet moved on board. Now, if we get all of that correct, we're going to have onboarding success. Okay? Drawing it out, the one thing that struck me is that there is an, actually a number of stages that somebody goes through. There is a number of adjustments that we expect a new hire to go through. And it is very much a process. Okay, this isn't something that we're going to wrap up tidily in a couple of hours or even a couple of days. Okay. Who's a fan, by the way? Is there anybody in the group a fan? No? <laughs> My wife's a fan. <laughs> there is usually Before one. Before I watch. There is, there is one usually in every room. <laughs> Onboarding, well, the X Factor, Idol, Australia's Got Talent, all of those sorts of programs. They are probably some of our best examples of onboarding. And if you think about it, we have a group of people who have been selected en masse. They go through not just a one-off event over an afternoon, they go through a process that unfolds over many months. 
And in that time, they get exposed to a lot of industry insiders who give them coaching, mentoring, targeted feedback, who coach them in the ways of the industry, all the subtleties of the music industry or the talent world. And they, um, go th they get feedback. So they go through their presentations and immediately after each presentation, they get some very targeted feedback. What worked well? What didn't work well? What can they improve next time? We also have a few redundancies. So as we go through the process, a few people get dropped off. Um, and those people that get dropped off haven't met the standard. They haven't um, kept up to date in terms of understanding the content of the, the area or they haven't connected as well as they could have with the group or the culture. So it's a little bit far-fetched and it's a little bit removed but I think it um, highlights really nicely some of the key features that define the onboarding space. Which is a nice segue into my next slide which is very much about defining onboarding versus orientation slash induction. Now when I talk to a lot of organisations and ask them, you know, tell me about your onboarding, what do you have in place? What I often hear is more what's sitting on the orientation column. Onboarding is a process. Orientation slash induction is more a one-off event. <coughs> Onboarding is customised. We build it around the needs of that individual given the role, the level, the industry in which they're working. Orientation is very much a one-size-fits-all. Onboarding covers all aspects of an individual's working life. Orientation, on the, other, on the other hand, is very narrow. It tends to focus more on the systems, the processes. You get your access card, you get your swipe key, you find out where the kitchen is, the bathroom. Uh, you might get introduced to a few staff, you know, your computer, so on. Whereas onboarding is very much about accelerating learning and adjustment, as I said, orientation is about understanding our systems, our processes. And finally, onboarding I see is very much the domain of uh, senior leaders. It's the responsibility of internal coaches, managers, peers, as well as HR. Orientation is very much HR's responsibility and admin staff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the stuff that's sitting on the um, orientation column is important. And it is certainly a key part of the process, but in and of itself, it is not the whole process. <laughs>